Welcome to part five in this series of videos where we will be creating a birthdays reminders application uh, using uh, Blazor server. Our approach to using Dapper in this project will be to use SQL stored procedures to provide the CRUD operations, CRUD being create, read, update and delete. In addition to the SQL store procedures, we will also require model, service and interface classes for the C-sharp code. We will need stored procedures and C-sharp classes for every table. If we had multiple tables, this would be a bit of a bore. But fortunately, an application originally written by Alan Simpson, Simpson and since adopted and modified by me, takes care of most of the repetitive work. Luckily for this project, there is only one table. The work that we therefore have to do is to use the code generator to create the SQL script in C Sharp code. Turn our attention to SQL Server and run the script to create the stored procedures. And then go to our Visual Studio project and add the models, service and interface code. The website that I've created um, with the Dapper code generator is shown at the bottom here. Uh, originally, Alan Simpson's code had to be downloaded from a GitHub resource. Uh, I've, I've decided that it might be easier if we actually put the code generator on the web so it can just be run from there. The reason for this, amongst other reasons, is that I discovered that the uh, code generator, Alan Simpson's original code generator, didn't handle .NET 6 or Visual Studio 2022. I also discovered that it didn't deal with GUIDs correctly. So therefore I've, uh, I won't say rewritten, but I've rewritten parts of his application, um, but I've also streamlined it uh, a little bit. So let's have a look at the code generator. As I say, the uh, code, generator, code generator is now an application available to anyone. Uh, it's on the web with this website. I will put the uh, address in the description of the, uh, the YouTube video. And this will look very similar uh, to anyone who's used Alan Simpson's code. What we need to do is, first of all, enter the namespace of our project here and it's case sensitive and it's got to be exactly correct. And in here we need to create the, or sorry, paste the create table code from SQL. Now I've described here how we can do this and the simplest thing is to go to SQL server and choose script, create to, and then a new query window. So if we look at that, so this is the, this is the database, person is the table. I right click, click script table as, create to new query ed, editor window. And after a few seconds, it will appear. And it's this section we need to copy from create table down to the last field. So I'll copy that paste it in here and click go. And it will then create the code that we need underneath. Now, some of this we've already done. So we've already created the SQL database with our table. We've created our Blazor server project. We've added Dapper and the Microsoft data.sql client NuGet packages, and we've added the connection string. So the next thing we have to do is create the stored procedures. And to do this, I'm just going to copy this whole section down to here. Go back into SQL, close that, we don't need that anymore. Add new query, paste it and execute it. It said it's run. If we look under programmability, I have to re refresh it. 
under stored procedures, we can now see we've got the stored procedures for each of the CRUD operations. So now we need to turn our attention to the C sharp code. So in C sharp, I've got the application uh, already open here. Uh, so what we have to do is in the data folder, we need to create a class uh, with the name of the, the table. So I right click, add class, and the table's called person. So I add a class called person.cs. I then go back to the website and I copy the code for the person CS. So I'm going to copy the whole of that. Be careful to make sure that you use this using, you copy using system component model dot data annotations. So copy that. And I'm going to replace everything in here. So that's the person. Now we want person service. So data folder, right click, add class person service. Back to the website and copy the code for the person service. Again, I'm going to replace everything. And lastly, we want the interface file. So right click on data folder, add class my person service. On the website, I need that much. Copy that, replace everything here. And lastly, and this is easy to forget, uh, if we go back to the website again, we need to add this to program.cs. So we'll put it under the weather service. Now at that point, we should be able to run the application and it should work. We aren't going to be able to see anything, um, but it should work. So let's just test it. Right, we have to sign in as we've already done the Azure B2C. And we can log in. Uh, we haven't got anything to show, uh, but the, the application still runs. Now I've rather glossed over uh, some of the SQL and C Sharp, so we'll just have a brief look at that. And I'll start by looking at the SQL and these will all follow a similar pattern, but we've got a separate stored procedure for each CRUD operation. So insert, list, get one, update, and delete. And they all follow a similar pattern. We pass some parameters where needed. So the person, first name, person, last name, date of birth, send reminder to. These are being passed into the stored procedure from our C-sharp code. And then it's going to, in this case, insert into the person table, into these column names, and these are the values, these parameters being passed in. Similarly for list, uh, we don't have any parameters for that. We just select asterisk from the person table, and it's ordered by person ID descending. 
there's no real virtue in having it descending or ascending, particularly as the person ID is a GUID. So it's going to be pretty random. Um, for get one, we just have a person ID, a unique identifier being passed in as the parameter. And we're going to select all the columns from the person table where the person ID equals the person ID parameter being passed in. Similarly for update and for delete. So that's the SQL side of things. On C sharp, if we look at the person table model first, um, we're using uh, data annotations. So therefore any fields that set to not allow null is having required. Uh, for strings, we're putting the string length and uh, where they're required, and we're not allowing nulls, I'm uh, defaulting it to each uh, string to an empty string. Um, can't do that with date of birth, of course. So that's the person class. The person service uh, is a bit more complicated. Um, we have some um, kind of magic up at the top where we uh, create the database connection using iConfiguration underscore configuration. And it reads the connection ID from our app settings.json and is looking for the default connection ID. Um, we could have called that anything, uh, but we decided to call it default. So that's used throughout the rest of the uh, service. So if we look at this one, which is just the uh, person insert, it's going to return a Boolean, either saying it succeeded or failed. Uh, and we're going to pass into the, uh, uh, the method, uh, the person object uh, coming from our code, which we haven't yet written. And then this, we're now using, this is a departure from previous uh projects, we're now using IDB connection, we're calling it con, and we're getting the connection string uh, from the connection ID. The parameters we're passing in are person name, first name, last name, date of birth, and who to send a reminder to. So these are all coming from the person model and with their various types. And this is the bit that does the hard work. Uh, it executes the stored procedure sp person underscore insert. It passes in those parameters and the command type is a stored procedure and it returns true if it succeeds. Similarly, uh, as for uh, getting a person list, it, we're going to return an i enumerable of the person class. And we're using this IDB connection again with the connection string. And we're going to get the people object back uh, from SP person list. Um, again, the command type is store procedure. They're all store procedures and they all follow a similar pattern. I don't think there's anything exceptional about the rest of them other than to say that they all follow a similar pattern. And once you've got the idea of one of these, you can create you create your own if needed. The person service is just a summary of the, well, it's not a summary, it's an interface that shows the individual uh, class, service classes that we've got here. I think that just about wraps up what we've got to cover in this video. I'm sorry it's been a little bit longer coming out than I had intended. Uh, the Blazor Dapper code generator uh, proved to be uh, more tricky than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting to run into problems using .NET 6 or Visual Studio 2022. Um, but I think I've produced something that's worthwhile. I'll put a link in the description of this video, both to the GitHub resource that has got the code for the code generator and to the website where it can be run from. Thank you very much.
for watching and uh, hopefully the next video shouldn't be too long coming along. Thank you.